Ashton Bingham here from Without Code, and welcome back to another tutorial video. We've just released our document viewer widget for the web builder, and I'm going to give you a brief walkthrough of the setup and features. It's a pretty simple widget, but it's actually really cool and a perfect widget for displaying documents on your website. Many of you from the Muse world may remember our PDF viewer widget for Muse, and this takes that functionality to a whole new level. We built the widget with versatility in mind, so it supports a broad range of document types like PDFs, Word docs, Excel spreadsheets, PowerPoint presentations, and a lot more. You can use files that are local on your computer and upload them to the site server to display that way, or you can even display a document that's hosted elsewhere like Google Docs or Google Sheets. We've got a variety of examples here, and you can see that the viewer has its own scroller, so you can display large or long documents without taking up a ton of room on your page. I've got our musician theme opened over here in the web builder, and I'm going to incorporate our document viewer widget to display right here on the home page underneath our bio for now. So let's jump into our widgets panel. And from our basics section, we'll grab our document viewer widget and place it right on our page. And when you do that, you'll probably see this little missing file message here when you first drop it in. No worries there. That's going to go away as soon as we link up some content. And I'd recommend not messing with the sizing of the actual widget container here on the page. There are thorough sizing tools inside the design section of the widget panel that's going to give you better control over that. And I'm going to run through all of that before the end of this video. Let's take a look inside our settings panel. You've probably seen our unique ID field before. Just give this a unique name for the page in case you're displaying multiple documents at once. And the rest of this is pretty straightforward. We've got two methods here for selecting our document file. We can upload it directly to the server or paste the URL here for a remote document. Let's look at upload first. And this is the option you'll want to select if you have the actual document file on your computer or hard drive already. And you want to upload it right to the server and display it on your site that way. So we'll click upload slash select file. And the option we'll need here is the very last one for file for download. So we'll select that. And that drops down a little plus sign prompt here for us to upload our file. So let's click. Now, if you've been working on your site already, you may see some of your pre-existing site content displayed in here. Or in my case, I've got nothing uploaded yet, so we're just seeing this blank screen. But either way, you want this option down here for upload new file. So let's click. And here you can drag and drop files into the box or simply click choose files. And that'll prompt us with our finder window where we can navigate to the document file that we want to display. And I've got a sample brochure here ready to go. So let's select that. There we go. And then finally, we'll click Upload. Now, once it's uploaded, we'll see it added to our list of content here if you have any already. Now, when we hover our mouse over the file, we can click this magnifying glass icon here to see the file previewed in the browser, just like that and it'll load into a new tab so you can see how it looks and make sure everything's good to go. But let's switch back. And if we are good to go, we'll want to hover once more and click Select. Perfect. And once we do that, we can now see it listed beneath File for Download in this menu here. And if I close the panel completely, we can see it already showing up nicely in our widget on the page. Pretty awesome. Let's actually give this page a quick preview. There we go. It sits really nicely on our page, completely interactive with its own scrolling capabilities, allowing me to navigate the entire document here directly on the page without needing to download anything first or load any new browser tabs. Pretty awesome. Let's go back to editing mode. And back inside our settings panel. Now let's explore how we can use a remote file. You may want to display a document that's already hosted somewhere else on the internet, and you can do that no problem. We simply need to grab the link to the file. Now, in most cases, your file URL will end with the name of your file extension, such as like mysite.com slash mydocument.pdf, similar to if you were linking to an off-site video file of some kind. This is most common when a file is uploaded directly to a site server, similar to what we just did a moment ago, or if a file has been uploaded via FTP. However, in other cases, such as Google Docs, Google Sheets, or Dropbox links, these will not end with the file extension type. So let me click over to a sample I've loaded into Google Sheets here. And to use this document, simply enough, we can click our share button here on the top right, and we'll click copy link, just like that. And before you do this, you're going to want to make sure that the permission settings of whatever your document is are set to the most public possible. 
As seen here, I have this set to anyone on the internet can find and view. Having any privacy restrictions is going to limit the widget's ability to properly display the document. And one more thing I want to note here, if you are using a Dropbox link, you can acquire the shareable link the same way, but you'll want to make one small change to it. I have an example over here, I'm just going to switch over really quick. If any of you use Dropbox sharing often, you're probably familiar with how the Dropbox URLs have this DL equals zero at the end of the URL, which is basically just a download command for the URL. You'll want to change this to DL equals one. This is what's going to allow the widget to properly access and utilize the document from Dropbox. But I've already copied my Google Sheets link, so let's head back to the widget. Now before we paste our link, one more thing to keep in mind here, when you've got a file loaded in the locally hosted section above it, like we do right now, it's going to override the remote file URL option. So it's important to remember to remove this file just like so, if we're going to use the remote file option. So there we go. So now we can paste our link here under remote file URL. And there we go. Just like before, we've got our document showing beautifully in our viewer right here in the editor. So these two different methods give you a ton of freedom regarding the types of documents you might want to display. And as I mentioned before, there are a ton of file types supported by the viewer. I will, however, mention a few file types that are not supported for upload directly into the Without Code Builder. And those are .ai or Adobe Illustrator files, .eps and .ps for PostScript files, any markup or code such as CSS, HTML, PHP, etc., and tagged image file format or TIFF files. For any of those I just mentioned, you're going to need to use the remote file URL option for use in this widget. Before we close out real quick, let's head over to the design section of the settings panel here. Just a couple of quick things to mention. As I said before, you have more control over the sizing of the viewer by using the parameters in here as opposed to manually sizing it on the canvas. So feel free to adjust the width and height using these sliders or typing in pixel dimensions manually. Viewer border is a nice option if you want to give it a bit of a frame, and you can select any color you want as well. And finally, preload color. This allows you to customize the color of the preloading icon in case the document takes a moment to load into the widget upon page load. So that's our document viewer widget for without code. Thanks again for watching. Feel free to check out documentation on this widget on our website. And don't forget to subscribe to our without code YouTube channel for frequent tutorial videos and updates. Thanks again, and we'll catch you in the next video. Take care.